Hey guys, what's going on? So in this video, I'm going to show you how to do the brakes and uh, Kia Sportage. This one happens to be a 2018. We're going to take the caliper off. It's a 14 millimeter here. And we're going to crack the bolts loose on it. And you've got a couple of different ways you can collapse the piston on this thing. Um, you can slip the caliper off and collapse it with a pair of ice grips. I'll show you the type we use. Or you can use a Pry back the piston slowly. So we roll the caliper up. And you can get some space in here. And you can slowly go back. And you see in the piston get the press back here. And if you work it right, you can get the whole thing back. You can use the brake pad finish collapsing it if you want. Piston just about back there now. Just one less step that you have to do. Now, if you don't get the piston all the way back, when you pull it off, this has little retaining spring clips here that are pushing these out. We'll show you these when we put these on. They clip into the little hole and they try and spread the brakes. And they're working because they force the brake pad out. So these are okay. And the brake pad that has the, the tab on it for the wear bar is on the inside on the top and that's just gonna be the same on both wheels. So we're gonna take this bracket off in a second. Let's see how the piston right here is collapsed all the way. If, if you find it not collapsed all the way, get in here with a pair of vice grips like this. And get in here and just gently you know, finish crimping it down, but this one's bottomed out, so we took our time to do it. Now we're going to bungee cord the caliper up to the to the uh, spring here, and uh, it's going to keep it out of the way for us. Okay. Now we got the bar on the back here, the caliper bracket bar. And that's a 17 millimeter. You can crack these loose. Sometimes you need a half inch brake about to do this. Let's we'll see if we can get it off. And you're going to never seize all these back up. Get this, put it back together. Still waiting for someone to send me a cordless ratchet. It hasn't happened yet. <laughs> so I'll get this off. We're going to work the caliper bracket with the brake pads on the bench. And the blueberry pop. Get this off. A little dry. We're going to clean these up and never see them. Get them back on. And our boots, so the boots are moving in, so the pins aren't frozen, so that's good. We're going to lube them with, we use the synthetic grease for these. Get this off. So we can slide our brake pad out here and here. I like to keep them on the side that we took them off so you're not forgetting anything. Piston, I mean the side with the um, wear bar is towards the caliper pins. So we pull the caliper pins out. And one of these caliper pins always has like a little rubber boot on them and this is, happens to be it. And we're just going to lube these up, get them nice and moist, put it all back together. And we're going to show you how to take the clip off of the bracket. We have a little file here that we like to use to, to scrape the, the debris off below these clips here. And I'll we'll talk about that after we get this all looped up. We use a synthetic caliper pin lube. There was still a little clear lube on this from the factory and that's fine, you can leave it on there. Just wanna make sure these things get a good lubrication, they don't seize up. These take a lot of heat from the front brakes here. 
Especially if I'm driving it. Yeah, right. I'm driving sure. like my wife. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so we can roll the clips off. Yeah. Yeah, lay everything out the way you took it off, so at least you're not sure how it goes back on. Uh, here's a little file that we have. We use this file on, on all of the brake jobs that we do. And you're just going to stand a caliper up. See that? Sometimes some rust will build up in this. Now, this is a newer vehicle, but we're going to run the file across there and try and get the debris out of here until we can start seeing some clean spots in here. And what happens is this stuff rusts up and it swells up. Then when you go to put your brake pads in there with your new clips, it just breaks your ass. It's just worth so much. It seems like the Chevy pickup trucks are really brutal for this. You gotta spend some time cleaning them up. And we're just trying to make sure they feel smooth, you know. And we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna do the other side. And you get just getting shellac out of there and crust and stuff that's built up all the time. And our new clips are going to fit in there. All good. All right. Now we got our new clips here. I'm gonna fold the clips in here. And what we're doing is we're trying to shorten the distance in between the brake pad here and here and here. And if you have crud built up inside, this distance is shorter now. When you try to put the brake pad in, it just kind of breaks your ass. So you line up your clips in here. You can push these down. Put them to lock in. Kind of hear them scraping as they go in. You want to look to make sure that they're tight right here and here on the other side as well. Check them tight there, tight on that side. Okay, so now. The fun part. <laughs> we're gonna get your hands clean for this. We got a little piece of sandpaper out here, and we're gonna take our caliper pin lube. We're gonna lube up the sleeves here. And this is where the brake pad rides, so you're gonna have some 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 lubrication in there. When you go to put the brake pads in here. You know, it just makes it a little easier if you got a little bit of lubrication in there. All right, so we'll go with that. Now, this inside pad, the way we have this set up, we took it off. So here's our pad that went over here. It's got the clips, take these off. We got our new brakes and we're gonna slide these in place. And they seem to be kind of difficult to do. So we're gonna put the first one in on this side first and then tap this one in a little bit. So let's get the hands as clean as we can get. We got some sandpaper, we're gonna scuff the pads to get our paw prints off of them. So this one's gonna go on on the inside, uh, like so. And they're, they're tough to get in there, so, you know, if you try and get the brake pads in on an angle, you're almost trying to wedge them in. And they're tight to go down into place. Okay, I got this one up. I kind of made that look easy, guys, but it's kind of a pain in the ass. So, got that one down. Keep it right at the very edge there. We need the distance in between for our brake rotor to fit on. Okay, now if we got any paw prints in there, we just take our sandpaper, stand that up. By cleaning the grooves we, that we did with the file, it's gonna make for these brake pads to go on easier. 
So now this one went on the outside like that and try and knock that one down at the place. Gotta make sure that they're bottom. See, you still got a little gap right here. That's gonna make it difficult for you to get this thing in. So you kinda gotta push this thing in a little bit right there so it clips. Line this thing up and sometimes you gotta just tap them a little bit. But if we get the screwdriver in here, just kind of wedging it down. this one up keep our finger on it so it doesn't slide past the point and we have this one in now we're just going to flip it over and then we get some paw prints in there okay now these clips we're going to put these clips on last after we sit this in place and we're squeezing them together. Put these clips on now, it'll push your brake shoes out and then we're starting over again. So right now let's go pull the rotor off the vehicle and um, this, this caliper is all lubricated, the clips are in, the caliper pins are done, the brake pads are installed the way we had them with the warning tab up. So this is all ready to go on and you gotta make sure you have a good distance for your rotor to slide on. You won't have to try and mess with these when we put, the, put it on the rotor. So the rotor has two theme, uh, Phillips bits on it, and we have our tool um, to, to release these. And um, this is very important that you don't strip these out, or you're going to be drilling these. So um, we have our slide hammer tool here that we're going to use, and you're just twisting as you're hitting, and it cracks it free. And this one has two on it. Most rotors only have one for some reason, but this one has two. Sometimes you just strip them out and you make it for a long night. It's two for your pleasure, Steve. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Alright, so we're getting, these, we're getting these off. And we're going to take the hammer and smack the rotor from the back side to, to get it off. And sometimes they're really frozen coming off. And um, hopefully that's not going to be the case. Seize our hub here, okay, and we're going to lubricate all of our bolts right now. Never seize these, never seize these, put a little on those, and um, we're going to put the never seize around the rotor here. And we take some of the caliper pin grease and we put it on the, the piston boot to keep it lubricated because there's a lot of heat that gets in there, and we want to keep that lubricated. And we'll just put a little tab, a little dab on the top of the flat spots here, and we'll. After we get everything lubed, we'll come back to you and we'll be ready for assembly. All right, so Tony got the spindle hub all lubed with Nemesis. He put the synthetic grease on the caliper piston, so that's all lubed up over here for the boot. Put some up on the top. We cleaned our rotor with brake clean. We're going to line up the holes to bolt this back on. Okay, those are lined up. We got our tool here. Put a little dab of never sees on these. I mean, you may be able to get these out with like an impact gun, you know, but you got to be careful. So we use the little impact driver. Got this at the local pop store. It's inexpensive. It's a Lyle brand, and um, they use it for a lot of things. 
so it's worth having. So just snug these up. Okay, we're gonna go grab our brake pads, assembly, and slide that on. distance on the brake pads, a good distance, because we want to slide these on without hitting the rotor. Now I'm going to squish them together. Now I'm going to put these clips in right now. And um, actually we're going to put the uh, bolts on first. Catch our bolts in the back here. Hold these down first. Tony Y wheeled them all up and put the Nevises on them. Do this one on the bottom here. And these are 17s. Seventeen. Make sure they're tight. Okay, now we're going to put these clips on. Try and squeeze, keep these squeezed together. I don't want them to spring apart on me. Makes for a pain in the ass. Come on, Tony, get the light down here, huh? Sorry, you can't right. see, old man. Here we go. All right. <laughs> Trying to find the hole here, right? <laughs> That's not it. Mm. <laughs> okay. All right, so squeezing these together. My caliper. Trying not to take my hand off of these because I don't want it to spring out and lose anything until I get the caliper over it. All right, the caliper's over. Push my pistons in a little bit, caliper pins. Okay, so we got that all on. And come on, we got all these bolts all lubed up. We're gonna catch our bolt here. And these are the 14s. Okay, we've got everything back together on this now, and uh, we got our rotor tight, we got our pads on, everything's lubricated. We're going to go pump the brake pedal up softly until we get a firm brake pedal, and then we're going to go check our other side. After you do one side, if you pump the brake up, you won't force any brake fluid out of the pedal, out of the master cylinder. So um, remember, when the brake pads get thin, the brake fluid goes down. When you collapse the piston, you're pushing brake fluid back up. If it's overfilled, it'll leak out a little bit. It's not the end of the world. Um, but if you do one wheel at a time and you pump the brake up, um, more than likely that's not going to happen. So this side is completely done. It's going to be the same procedure to do on the other side. And, you know, we just put this little bungee cord in here to make our life a little easier. And uh, pull the caliper for us. And everything's buttoned up and this side's done. We got the Phillips screws holding the rotors on it. We're going to take these off with the impact driver. And we got two 14 millimeter bolts holding the caliper on. And then two 14s that are holding the uh, bracket for the brake pads in the back. And one of them, you can't get a ratchet in on this one. So we're going to use a gear wrench for that one. So we'll start cracking stuff loose with this 14 right now. And I'll crack the caliper bracket loose. Right there. All 
gonna grab the bottom one here. I'm just gonna crack it loose for now. Yeah, we got our 14 gear wrench here. Get this bottom bolt right here enough. All right, so we're gonna, same thing as the front. We're gonna slide the caliper back a little bit and we're gonna collapse the piston. These don't have uh, retractable pistons, so it's just nice. They just collapse back like the normal ones in the front. And we got a little bar here. I'm just gonna roll this back a little bit. And get our tool in here. Now, I'm gonna flip this one up on the top, and we talked about using the vice grips to finish collapsing this. So we're gonna use these and stick these in here. And you're just gently depressing on this to have the piston go in. And you'll feel it when it bottoms, and that's it. And we're gonna do the same thing that we did on the other one. We're gonna lube our caliper. We're going to lube this around here so that we make sure this is all greased up and um, with caliper pin lube to keep the boot uh, moist. And we can just sit the caliper up here out of the way for right now. And we crack our bolts loose. We're ready for the bracket. So let's start taking these off. Seize these. You can pry the caliper bracket off. See the springs have kind of fallen off these now. They, these are a little tricky, so you know you can take them off now. And then we pry this bar back. And we're gonna go put this on the bench and just sit this there. We'll come back and um, well, we'll load up everything on the brake pads on the bench right now, lube our caliper pins. Then we come back, we're going to take the rotor off, and um, we'll use the impact driver to take these off and take the rotor off. And there is emergency brake shoes on the inside in here, so we're going to have to adjust this new rotor so you have a little, you know, drag on your brake drum so your pedal feels good. Um, it's normally pretty close when you put it on, but um, you're probably going to get maybe two, maybe three clicks with the self-adjuster. And then if you feel a little drag on the road, you know it's comfortable and we'll go over that. So let's go get our caliper set up. I mean our brake pad set up in the pad bracket. Okay, we're gonna knock the brake pads down. And that should knock the other one out here. And like the rear, like the fronts that we did, you know, we got these little retaining clips there. We're gonna pop these off. And our brake pad, this brake pad here went like this. This is the one with the tab for the um, wear tab. And that's gonna fit in like this. So we keep that to this side right here. Now our brake caliper, uh, brake bar if you will, um, we take our little file and we were always talking about filing these down to make sure that they're clean because that takes up space on the clips and makes your brake pads tight when you go to put them in. So you spend a few minutes cleaning all this stuff up, it makes together makes it go uh, together a lot simpler, simpler and easier, and um, you don't have to fight with the brake pads. Over time, these things will rust and swell up, and then that's what makes it difficult to get the brake pads on. So I'm gonna make sure we spend a couple of seconds here filing these up, and feel pretty smooth. And do this one. Now you just start seeing some clean metal. You know, you're getting it done right.
Okay. Feels pretty good there. So we can take our clips now. Clips have these little mounting tabs in here. These are kind of tight to, to tap down or we'll try and just push them down with your finger. So finding it that I'm kind of pushing them down as much as I can, but I'm taking a little hammer, just tapping them down just to make sure. You gotta make sure that this is flat. Now this is not down all the way. See the space we got here? We gotta get this down more. Okay, that's tight. That's tight there. That's tight there. Let's get the other side in. A lot of times you can just push these in with your thumbs. See, these are these are a little a little difficult. good okay so we have to move our caliper pins now remember there's always one caliper pin that has a pin on it a rubber grommet on the bottom of it and it's not this one so it's got to be the other one and that's for like a vibration issue so that's a caliper pin lube on this oh, this one doesn't have one either just the front side of it. So build this all up with grease. And slide it in so the boot locks. Okay, now we're gonna lubricate our slides and then we have to put our pads in. pads in. Clean your hands really good. We've got our sandpaper ready in case we get our paw prints on them, which we probably will. And this pad's going to go in like this. And if you can put them in sideways and roll them, fantastic. Doesn't always work out. You don't want it to pop out like that. Okay. We got them in and we keep them close to the edge. And I don't really have any paw prints on this to speak about, so. Okay, let's get this one on now. Got them just started on the edge right there. And this one, we're going to slide back a whisker. Okay, the road is not that wide, so we'll be we'll be okay. But I'm going to get my paw prints off this thing right now. This is set to go on, and let's get our rotor clean now. So I want to get the coated rotors. It's a nice. 
You gotta spray a little brake clean on them. Get the little oil residue on them that they put on them. And you flip this one over. Remember, your parking brake shoes are in here. So you gotta do the inside as well, right here. Now, we're gonna go pull the other rotor off, okay? Show you how to do that. And then we have to, um, we have to make an adjustment. This brake adjust, emergency brake adjustment. We'll show you how to do that. And let's go pull that rotor off. And three. All right, we got the slide hammer here. Impact driver, pardon me. Okay, so we're gonna take that, these off now. And this is our little plug for our emergency brake adjustment, which is right here, this rubber plug. It's a little easier to take it off once you get this off. Now when we get this off, we're gonna never seize the hub so the road, the road doesn't get seized on there the next time. Because Tony's gonna to keep this car. <laughs> but there he it's my wife's guy. Okay. Give it a little shock. Now, we talked about this little plug here, and then we can just push it out with our thumb now. We'll put this in after. All right, so here's our self-adjuster right down here. And we're gonna line this up when we put the wheel in here. We're gonna run the screwdriver down through here and crack this up. Our brake shoes look good, our emergency brake shoes are good. Doing an inspection, make sure your springs are all intact. Emergency brake, uh, your self adjuster here with the spring is intact. The shoes aren't loose. These pads are only bonded on that these can fall off. Now you look at these brake shoes and you say, oh man, they look kind of look kind of thin. They're not thick like normal brake shoes would be on an older car. They you buy them new and they're paper thin, so they're really there's not a lot there. And if you look at the inside of the rotor here. Tony's wife hasn't really used her emergency brake very often, so yeah. that's why they stay in good condition. Um, so let's go, our, our rotor is all cleaned up. All we have to do now is, uh, we're gonna never seize our hub here so that the rotor doesn't get seized on here the next time someone goes to change it. We're gonna get all our bolts never seized and we'll come back to you when we put the rotor on. Okay. All right, so we got everything lubed up, all bolts and everything. We're gonna line our rotor up with the hole for the, the stud here. And we have our down at 12 o'clock position is, pardon me, six o'clock position is a self-adjuster. And I'm gonna get the little small screwdriver and adjust that. So. All right, so I can't hear the shoes dragging at all right now. I wanna hear at least a little bit. So I feed this in here, and by feel, I'm trying to find the self-adjuster. And I know it's at 12 o'clock somewhere in here, so. At six o'clock, pardon me. Okay, I got it right here. Now I could tighten it up, and now I can't turn it, okay? So that's too tight. So now I'm gonna come back and back it off like three turns. I don't know if you can hear that, but I hear a little bit of drag on the shoe. That's all I want is just a whisker of drag on the shoe. I don't want a lot on it because I don't want it to heat up and then start grabbing the emergency brake shoes. But I want to hear a little something so that when you go and pull on the emergency brake, it's, it's right there, okay? So this one's adjusted up properly. We can take our little rubber plug, just pop that, that back in there. I can put my two screws in. Yeah, 
you know, this is a fairly easy job to do. Um, it's nice that the caliper piston doesn't have a screw type piston, it just retracts. You can collapse it back gently. Can you get down tight? All right, now we have our brake bar with our brake pads. I'm gonna go grab it. It's all set up to go. We got our bolts all ready to go. So we're gonna slip that on and we'll be right back. All right, so we got our clips, but we're not putting them on yet. We're gonna sit the brake bar, caliper bar back in place. Grab one of our bolts there. We have our shoes really spaced out nice. Our brake pads, pardon me. So now listen, I just pushed them in. Now they're all locked in place. I'm gonna line up my bolts down here. We want the, the boot to be moist because this stuff dries out because of the heat. And if this boot cracks, you'll get dirt in there, and that's the shortens the life of that. Just put a little lube on this side here. Now the clips. These two little clips are what spreads the shoes after you step on the brake. These try and spread the shoes out. So you get one that goes on the bottom here. Tony can get the light in, I can see the hole here. These are a lot of fun. Right, Steve? Yeah. <laughs> okay, you can put them in like that. Now they taper in, there's a little taper that me keeps them pushed out like this. We gotta just keep them like this. So as we're sliding the caliper on, we wanna make sure the hose isn't twisted on the caliper. It's gonna push down on these clips. You can see the clips moving. Gets a bolt. Catch another one here. Now I gotta push down on this. Okay, you can see our little clips in here pushing on the caliper. And that's what's spreading the shoes and keeping the shoes tight so there's no rattling of the shoes. The flex hose isn't kinked, we made sure we got that on the right way. Okay, we can tighten these up with the gear wrench. Sometimes you just put your thumb against the top one. You're probably going to put a wrench on that to hold it. This one we didn't have to. Alright, that was caught. You can put a wrench on this to hold it if you need to. We didn't need to. So, we have our brake adjustment down on the rotor. So you could just hear the emergency brake shoes just dragging just a whisker. And then we had um, our caliper. We showed you how to put the caliper together with the brake pads, lubricate everything. We put our plug back in. We tightened down our screws for the rotor. Um, everything is tight. We're gonna pump up the brakes right now, and then we'll go over to the other side and do the same thing. And it's the same procedure on the other side. And um, that'll finish it up.